I'll be honest, I still don't really know what to think about the Matt Gates story. I honestly can't make heads or tails of it. It's certainly bizarre. I don't really know how to even describe the details, but nonetheless, the circumstances surrounding the story, the allegations, what he says in response, it's all really interesting. So let's talk about it and try to dissect what's actually happening here. So yesterday, the New York Times published this article reporting Matt Gates is said to face Justice Department inquiry over sex with an underage girl. An inquiry into the Florida congressman was open in the final months of the Trump administration, people briefed on its set. Now they go on to add, Representative Matt Gates, Republican of Florida and a close ally of former President Donald J. Trump, is being investigated by the Justice Department over whether he had a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old and paid for her to travel with him according to three people briefed on the matter. Investigators are examining whether Mr. Gates violated federal sex trafficking laws, the people said. A variety of federal statutes make it illegal to induce someone under 18 to travel over state lines to engage in sex in exchange for money or something of value. The Justice Department regularly prosecutes such cases and offenders often receive severe sentences. So there's a couple of things to note here. As the article states, this was not initiated by the Democratic Party. Trump was still in power when the Justice Department began this investigation into Matt Gates. And second of all, they don't necessarily know whether or not he was aware that the alleged 17-year-old in question was actually a minor. So there's some details that we don't know, but I will say that this seems a little bit relevant, don't you think? Quote, Florida Representative Matt Gates was literally the only person to vote against an anti-human trafficking bill. Hmm, that's a little interesting. You have a bill with unanimous support for human trafficking because who wouldn't support a crackdown on human trafficking? And he's the one member of Congress who doesn't support it. That's interesting. Also, this tweet that he put out, Aged Like Milk, he responded to Bibi Rexa, who said, there's no age that you can't be sexy. And he says, I say we change Florida's welcome signs to this. That is a big yikes from me. Jesus Christ. Now, I think that this next photograph, it tells you everything you need to know. Now, I don't know if you see it right away. However, if you look a little bit closer, well, I mean, this uh, kind of tells you a lot about Matt Gates. <laughs> a little bit suspicious, right? Is that where you go to order the kids, Matt? This is a uh, Pizza Gates. Apparently, that's that's the issue that we're dealing with. No, but um, on an unrelated note, a man named Matt Gertz is having a really terrible day for no particular reason, and I uh, I kind of feel bad for him, so I just wanted to put that out into the universe. Now, moving on, uh, Matt Gates decided to go on Tucker Carlson's show to explain his side of the story, and this just made matters exponentially worse. Things got not only more confusing, but he proceeded to implicate Tucker Carlson live on national television, literally. It is a horrible allegation and it is a lie. The New York Times is running a story that I have traveled with a 17 year old woman and that is verifiably false. People can look at my travel records and see that that is not the case. What is happening is an extortion of me and my family involving a former Department of Justice official. On March 16th, my father got a text message demanding a meeting wherein a person demanded $25 million in exchange for making horrible sex trafficking allegations against me go away. Our family was so troubled by that, we went to the local FBI. And the FBI and the Department of Justice were so concerned about this attempted extortion of a member of Congress that they asked my dad to wear a wire, which he did with the former Department of Justice official. Tonight, I am demanding that the Department of Justice and the FBI release the audio recordings that were made under their supervision and at their direction, which will prove my innocence and that will show that these allegations aren't true. They're merely intended to try to bleed my family out of money. And this former Department of Justice official tomorrow was supposed to be contacted by my father so that specific instructions could be given regarding the wiring of $4.5 million as a down payment on this bribe. I don't think it's a coincidence that tonight, somehow, 
The New York Times is leaking this information, smearing me and ruining the investigation that would likely result in uh, one of the former colleagues of the current DOJ being brought to justice uh, for trying to extort me and my family. And I believe we are in an era of our politics now, Tucker, where people are smeared to try to take them out of the conversation. I'm not the only person on screen right now who's been falsely accused of a terrible sex act. You were accused of something that you did not do. And so you know what this feels like. You know the pain it can bring to your family. And you know how it, it just puts people on defense when you're accused of something so salacious and awful. But it did not happen. It is not true. You just referred to a, a mentally ill viewer who accused me of a sex crime 20 years ago. Um, and it, of course, it was, it was not true. I never met the person. Um, but but I, I do agree with you that being accused falsely is one of the worst things that can happen. And you do see it a lot. Let's go back to the investigation. You, you say that it, was, uh, that it was or is underway. There was an investigation. What is the basis of that investigation? What is the allegation? Is that really not very clear from these news stories? Yeah, again, I only know what I've read in the New York Times. Uh, I can say that actually you and I went to dinner uh, about two years ago. Your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine. You'll remember her. And she was actually threatened by the FBI, told that if she wouldn't cop to the fact that somehow I was involved in some pay for play scheme, uh, that she could face trouble. And so uh, I do believe that there are people at the Department of Justice who are trying to smear me, uh, you know, providing for flights uh, and hotel rooms for people that you're dating who are of legal age is not a crime. Uh, and I'm just troubled that the lack of any sort of legitimate uh, investigation into me would then permute, would then convert into this extortion attempt. I, I don't remember the, the woman you're speaking of or the context at all, honestly. Yeah. Quote, I'm not the only one on this screen who has been accused of a terrible sex act. Tucker Carlson is sitting there just thinking, are you serious? And he totally, you know, like a media trained professional stone faces it. But in the back of his mind, he's thinking, are you fucking serious right now? People don't know about this. I mean, I certainly have never heard about this. Uh, also, Matt Gates then goes on to say, you and I went to dinner about two years ago. Your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine. You'll remember her. Tucker Carlson is sitting there like, me? Really? Seriously? I bring you on to do you a favor and you're now bringing me into all of this? First of all, is this dinner that you're referring to the 17 year old? Matt Gates claims later on in that interview that she doesn't exist. So I don't know who he's referring to and why he thought that that was relevant to talk about the dinner that he went to with Tucker Carlson. But it's nice to know that these uh, media elites are chumming it up with politicians, not shocking at all. But then Tucker Carlson goes on to deny that. And since he roped Tucker Carlson in to this, Tucker Carlson then uh, made a remark about it. Now, there's a cut at the beginning of this video. I pulled this clip from the YouTube channel at Fox News. I don't know why the cut is there. But nonetheless, watch how Tucker Carlson reacted to that interview. Matt Gates interview, that was one of the weirdest interviews I've ever conducted. That story just appeared in the news a couple of hours ago. And on the certainty that there's always more than you read in the newspaper, we immediately called Matt Gates and asked him to come on and tell us more, which as you saw, he did. I don't think that clarified much, uh, but it certainly showed this is a deeply interesting story and we'll be, we'll be following it. Don't quite understand it, but we'll bring you more when we find out. So basically his response was, thanks a lot, Matt. I guess I'm going to be expecting a call from the Justice Department or the FBI now. Thank you so much. Great friend. This is weird. Um, this is really, really weird. I, I still don't necessarily know what to take away from this situation. Uh, if it is the case that he's being extorted, which he also stated via Twitter and kind of said the same things that he said in that interview with Tucker Carlson, he didn't really add anything new, although a question that I was thinking uh, was pointed out in the replies. This person asks, how can they extort you for sleeping with an underage girl if you didn't do it? So if there's actual evidence of a crime and they're trying to extort you, this story is very, very complicated, and we're only beginning to scratch the surface. Nonetheless, we don't have all of the details. I don't necessarily know what to take away. I don't know if there's any culpability here. All that we know, the facts of the matter, as reported by the New York Times, is that there was an active investigation into Matt Gates. Uh, 
whether or not the truth comes out, I don't know. I hope so. But this is certainly very, very weird. Um, there's nothing left I could really say. You know, I, I can't supply you with substantive commentary until we have more concrete details. But certainly, Matt Gates is not helping himself at all here.